What I would normally do at this point, maybe go to Stack Overflow, uh, go post a question or an issue out in a particular uh, repository, but I don't know when I'm going to get an answer back. Sure. And uh, you know, since we're doing this demo, I, I really want to get an answer right away. Um, so what I want to do, like what, what most developers will do, is go find a colleague to go and uh, sort of work with and help me debug this, this issue. Sure. Um, I'm going to go and I'm going over to Slack, same tool that everybody uses, and I know that uh, uh, Amanda Silver, uh, one of my colleagues, is actually pretty good at JavaScript. So I'm going to reach out to her and, and see if she can help me. So, hey, Amanda. Hopefully she's around. Oh, hi, Chris. Hey, I'm all right. having a debugging issue with JavaScript. Can can you help? I can almost hear her rolling her eyes at you. Yeah, I know. All right, for sure. All right, so she's available, willing to help. Um, now I could set up a screen sharing uh, session right now, but I hate doing that. Right, like. Because then you're driving and, and I'm driving. And yeah, and there's stuff on the screen that I don't want to actually want to share with Amanda. <laughs> uh, you know, there's lots of reasons why, why screen sharing isn't isn't that uh, great. But what I can do is actually come uh, uh, over here into to VS Code, and what I want to do is show you. Um, it's a sort of a, an early early access to a new experience uh, in Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code. It's called uh, Visual Studio Live Share. So what is Visual Studio Live Share? Because well, that sounds, I, I'm, I'm getting excited. All right. Well, what this is going to do is let me collaborate with Amanda, but on my workspace. So all I have to do is come down here in the, in the status bar. There's a share button. Mm -hmm. I'm going to click on that. And what's going to happen is it's going to come back and it's going to give me a link to a workspace, or my workspace on the machine, that I can then share back with Amanda. Okay. So now I have this link. Um, I can go back over to Slack and I can paste this in. I say, all right. You know, there's the link. Can you okay. start to, to work with me? So what I can do is I, I can actually just go ahead and take this link and go directly into Visual Studio, which is my preferred coding environment, and go to the file menu and click Join Collaboration Session. And that picks up the thing directly from the clipboard. And I click Join. And what happens is uh, basically my instance of Visual Studio, which is personalized for me with all of my favorite settings, gets attached to Chris's workspace in VS Code on his machine. And you can see that immediately I actually have the Solution Explorer open. I can expand some of the folders and look at some things, look at the web util, for example. Um, and I can even come back and see where Chris's cursor is at. All right. At this point, we're probably on a, a voice session to confer in real time. Um, all right, Chris, why don't you show me what the problem is? All right. This loop here is giving me a problem. The data that's coming in looks fine, but when I uh, load up sentiment with level, I'm getting a bunch of undefined objects, and I don't know what the problem is. Hmm. Okay, let me take a look. So what I can do is I can then actually use a whole bunch of different navigation features. Like I could, for example, peak definition of the get happiness level to look at that that function. That doesn't seem to be what the issue is. So why don't you uh, why don't you go ahead and launch a debug session? All right. I'm gonna put a breakpoint. And I'm going to come down here, and we'll get a set of commands we can run. One of them is share a debugging session. I'll click on that. And again, what we saw before, we'll spin up Docker Compose. We'll build the image. And uh, uh, once that's up and running, I'll be able to browse to it, refresh the page, and we should hit the breakpoint. So Amanda's now actually seeing your breakpoint, and she can now interact with the environment. That's right. So now I'm, I actually have Visual Studio in a debug mode attached to Chris's debug session. And you can see that I have the locals window. So I have the call stack. I can actually go ahead and you know, inspect some variables here. I can look at the, the data, for example. And I can look at you know, what's going on with this object and see that there's you know, what's inside there. I can use hover tips um, and see what an individual S is. And that's undefined. But I can also go ahead and uh, step into if I wanted to do that. So next I'm stepping into, and I can go ahead and, and inspect uh, S again. And I can see that that's 0. So I don't think that's quite what, what he, we wanted to see. Um, OK, I actually I think I know what the problem is, Chris. Uh, why don't you stop debugging, and I'll show you what's going on. All right, let's stop debugging. OK, so there's this really cool thing that you can do, because TypeScript is the compiler that's actually powering the JavaScript language service, which is uh, to just use TypeScript as a JavaScript linter and go ahead at the top of the file and do ts check. And you can see that as soon as I do that, um, you'll see that we actually get mm. some squiggles here. 
And if we mouse over the, the error, you can see that the error says that the property sentiment doesn't exist on the type string. So what's happening here is that in JavaScript, if you use a for in loop, it's basically looking at all of the objects that are in the array. But if you look, use a for of loop, then it actually looks at the values of the array. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and change this and change that to of. And we should see that the compile errors actually go away. So I think that, I think that fixed it. Why don't you try it again? Awesome. All right. I'm going to press F5. We'll rerun the, we'll rebuild the container with the changes. It should only take a second. All right. Browse the website again. And now when I click on one of these sites, awesome. Now I can, I can see my chart yeah. on the left-hand side. Thank you, Amanda. You're welcome, Chris. See you later. Bye. So I'm going to stop the debugger and end my sharing session and go back to developing the application. OK, so a couple things. Right now that we've got a, a fix to our application, I want to check in the changes. And then I want to go and deploy this application to the cloud. So a couple cool things I want to show you uh, here in VS Code. So you have on the left-hand side, we've got these change bars. We've had these for quite a while. It says blue. We can see that something was changed. Now if I hover over it, it gets a little bit wider. And if I click on it, I can actually get an inline diff of the change that has been made to this particular line. I love that. Yeah, it's, it's actually lets me, if I come up here to the right-hand side, I can actually stage that change mm -hmm. immediately right from the editor. I don't have to go back over to the... The, the source code control dealer, and I can go through and selectively stage changes to my file right in my editor. All right, so I'll stage that one as well. And let's see, I think that's about, about right. Um, and what we'll do then is we'll go and uh, we'll finish staging everything, and then we'll say Amanda's fix, and we'll push that off to our repository. Okay. So now that our changes have been and pushed off, let's go and deploy this to the cloud. Now remember I said this runs as a, a, Docker, uh, a Docker container. And uh, what we need to do then is just go build the production container. And so what I can do is bring up the Docker file. I can right click and the Docker extension actually contributes a command here called build image. And when I click on that, it's going to say, all right, what do you want to name the image? Okay. All right. And so um, to push this up to the cloud, uh, I'm actually going to prefix the name with the Docker uh, container registry. registry, right. So, uh, but we're not going to use Docker Hub, right? We're going to use our own private registry in Azure, so the Azure Container right. Registry. Right, it's like service. what a company would use to share their images. Exactly. So we've got one already set up. It's called SH360 for Smart Hotel 360, um, and it's our dev registry. And it's at azurecr.io and WAC. So when I do that, it's going to go build the image, and it's going to name it uh, appropriately. Now, we can use the Docker extension down here. At, and this is what we installed earlier. Yeah, this is what we installed earlier. And it contributes something called an explorer. And uh, what it lets you do is sort of drill into all the images that are on your machine. Oh, that's great. Any containers that happen to be running, you can see there's the, the web uh, app that we're running locally on my machine. We can just basically shut that down. Oh, that's great. And of course, I have access to different registries, Docker Hub or Azure right now, because I'm logged into Azure. Mm -hmm. So to get this up in Azure, first step, all I have to do is say push. All right, and that's going to basically shell out to Docker push and push it up to the registry. And once it's up there, I can drill into the registry and say, here's the registry that we, we pointed at. And then here's the repository, the web repository. And here's the image that we just created and pushed up to Right. This Azure. is the live view uh, uh, in Azure. Yes, of my registry. So in order to deploy this, mm -hmm. um, what I want to do is actually deploy it to Azure App Service. Azure App Service is um, basically our platform as a service uh, offering which lets you run uh, websites in the cloud, but we manage them for you. What's cool about it is, is there's lots of different ways you can configure it. Um, you can run applications, basically like loose files on the machine, or you can run them as containers. Mm -hmm. You can run them on Windows machines, or you can run them on Linux machines. And what we do here in this case is we're going to run this container on a Linux machine up in Azure. Right. So when I, when I uh, say deploy this to Azure, it's just going to ask me a couple questions about where I want it. So first thing in the resource group, which is basically says, what's the name of your application? Mm -hmm. And uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pick the plan. The plan is basically the machine that we're going to run it on. And again, this is a Linux box up in Azure. And now all I have to do is give it a globally unique name. It's, it's going to be the URL for the application. So okay. I can say it's the SH360 dev uh, website. 
All right? And we'll make sure it's unique. We'll just add one, two, three, four to the end. And then when we do that, what's going to happen is we'll go and uh, provision that website um, in the plan. You can see it's uh, working now, updating some application settings, which tells it to run that Docker container um, uh, on the site. So it's done. So what we can do now then is we can use the Azure App Service extension. This was another extension that was recommended when we opened up the workspace. Right. And this gives me access to all the app services in my subscriptions in Azure. And that's what we just, Azure. this built is the one we're going to see, right? Yeah, right. So you can see it right here, the SH360 website, 1234. That's the one that we just built and, and ran up in, or deployed up into Azure. And I can come in here, and if I've got deployment slots, I don't have any oh, defined yeah, on this machine. Dev settings, or test, jobs, yeah, all that stuff is available to me right in this extension. It's amazing. Um, but what I can do is I can right click and just say browse website. And what this will do is browse us to sh360dev website 1234.azurewebsites.net. Now, what's going on uh, right now on this machine is basically a Docker pull is happening. Mm -hmm. So that image is being pulled from my Azure container registry onto that machine, and then we're loading it up. All right. right. So there we go. There's the app that we, we built earlier. And if I click on you know, Platinum Hotel, we can see that our charts are working. Yes. So awesome. You, yep. So it, it took us like three minutes. We deployed to our, our secure place and then uh, set up an environment and deployed the app in Azure. Yep. Exactly. Fantastic. And all this was done really it's with just a, a couple simple controls or extensions uh, for VS Code. 